really stand under <laughs> Thank you. 
if anyone is done with the lunch, please raise your hands. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. If you're done eating, please raise your hands. All right. This is a trick question. If you are done eating, please raise your hands. Thank you for volunteering to help take notes. All right, we'll be starting in about five minutes if everybody can come in and get seated and get their lunch.
Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this is the Working Group Chairs Forum at IETF 117. Um, everybody has their lunch. Um, perhaps can you close just a couple of those doors at the back just for noise. Thank you. Get closer to the mic. Okay. Excellent. So with that, um, welcome to the Working Group Chairs Forum at IETF 117. Uh, this is our note well, which you all have seen. Um, the next thing that I have is sort of some general admin notes. The one thing I would like uh, as we're going through this is I think it would be useful to have uh, a small working group, converse, working group chairs conversation at some point about what kinds of things we want to remind people about. I've, I've seen working group chairs doing a better job and a worse job of this. Um, and it would be kind of nice to have uh, a couple things that we, you know, maybe some suggested slides or suggested text. Uh, this is in no way the best one I've seen, but it's the one I have for today. So the first one is we will be doing uh, draft minutes. Uh, they will be in the online notes tool that's linked from data tracker. Please do not be confused by the fact that it shows up as EODER and not as working group chairs. So our Zulip uh, chat channel for this meeting is EODER and our notes page is EODER because we are organized under EODER for data tracker. Um, so uh, did you get volunteers? I heard you asking. Okay, so uh, feel free to add a few things in there as we go. Uh, second, please use the QTOL. Everybody knows this, but this is part of my wondering of what we should put in general admin notes to our meetings when we're running them. Uh, please be clear, concise, and respectful, and please act according to our IETF code of conduct. We have a pretty short, concise agenda today, which kind of got longer in the last few minutes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna give a very brief update with Dhruv on the EODER. Uh, and then we have uh, Greg talking about the onboarding kit, which we, you will have seen some traffic on on the working group chairs mailing list. Uh, and then we have a couple quick things on, um, I didn't change the title to the slides you sent me, but we have a, a visualizations and data tracker, a very short uh, RFC series update from Pete, uh, a very short conversation on next steps for working group chairs forum, and then um, open mic, any other business. Um, so with that, um, I'll start, for those of you who were following this, uh, the uh, education and, and the EMODER has been renamed to EODER. It's the Education and Outreach Directorate. It did not change in any way the scope of what we're trying to do um, or the scale of what we're doing. All it did was address uh, some concerns about the naming that was chosen previously. So. Uh, as with these things, and, and a special thanks to, to Greg Wood, who did most of the work to get all of the various updates in place. Um, but it's, it is now EODER. And with that, I was going to get Dhruv to talk a little bit in particular about the outreach. Uh, hello, everyone. So just an announcement. We have EODIR uh, side meeting, which is on Friday morning, 8.30 in the side meeting room. Uh, there won't be any breakfast, so have breakfast and come. We'll have a conversation, an update about how the newcomers program is working, some of our outreach coordination stuff, 
as well as the working group chairs training stuff that's been happening. So a bunch of updates and a quick conversation about what else EODR uh, should be doing. So all are welcome. See you in the side meeting. And the one thing I want to point out about this is that uh, EODR is primarily about coordinating efforts that other people are doing. Uh, and, and Greg has been reinforcing that with Drew and I. So what we're really looking for is activities that other people are doing that we can keep coordinated so that we're all on the same page. But it's not, it's a, it's a small team. You're welcome to join, but it's not a long list of things that we are doing ourselves. Uh, so with that, Greg is gonna talk about the working group chairs onboarding. Okay, uh, let's go up. No, so I'll lean over. Um, my name is Greg Wood. I'm with the ITF LLC. I also work on EODUR. Um, you may have, in this group, you may have uh, run into me because I've organized training for working group chairs over the last couple of years. Um, and so this is sort of in that same vein. I, the, just as a uh, preview, what I'm looking for here is to repeat the uh, request I made on uh, the email list about what we might prepare to help new uh, chairs or even uh, long serving chairs um, have sort of a set of resources that they can refer to to either get up to speed or to um, continue to ref refer to as a handy reference when they're doing their work. Um, oh, I guess next slide. Is that it? Fantastic. So these are the questions. Um, that I asked on the list, and, and I want to thank everybody who responded. Um, I'm going to run through the uh, a summary, my summary of the responses so far. Uh, so as you read through that and listen, listen to my short summary, be thinking about other things you want to uh, suggest that we uh, think about when we when when we do this uh, or take next steps. Hey, Greg, did you want to put the mic back up? I put it down for me. I'm trying. To, how did you it's, do it's, that? It's the one right there. Yeah, that one. No, the one at the top. You look. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't know how to work this. Sorry. In your hands. You can always grab the mic and yes. Okay, here we go, rock star. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, next slide. Next slide, please. These are the questions. I think Robert's going to help. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Robert. Uh, so this is sort of high level, sort of the general responses, which is, um, uh, yeah. So the number one by far is, how should I use Data Tracker? What can Data Tracker do for me? And I've, actually, I've, Robert and I have already started um, talking a little bit about these first two bullets. Um, so, oh, fantastic. I'm kind of liking this though. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm going to still do this. Um, Mick, Mick Jagger. Um, uh, yeah, so you can see you can see the general um, uh, bullet list of, of responses, but the number one for sure was how can I use Data Tracker better? What can it do for me? So uh, we're starting to work on that. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, this is just in a little, in a, in a little bit more detail. Thanks. Thanks for thought. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll also consider consider those, but those are um, detailed questions that I th that I think um, could have some pretty straightforward answers. Uh, the answers might already exist somewhere. So just pulling these kinds of things together in one place, um, maybe in a different way, uh, might be good. How do you want to handle the queue, Miri? Do you want to do you want to jump in right away? I mean, I'm 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 happy to. Are you going to talk about the how-tos? Quick guides? Quick guides? I, I have a only halfway related question. I was wondering, like, actually, when I started as a chair, I would have enjoyed some onboarding, like, really actually have a session where I learn everything I need to learn and talk to other chairs and get some experience. So um, I know mandatory is a hard word because you cannot enforce it, but, like, how does a room feel about actually requiring some mandatory onboarding session when you start as a new chair? That's that's a great question. So so maybe uh, add that to the list of questions I ask. I at mean, the end. I thought maybe we can take a hum. 
<laughs> I thought we don't do hums anymore because uh, it's not friendly for remote participants. But um, if we don't adopt anything, it's just the feeling of the yeah, the hand raising tool, which uh, we'd have to look for the chairs. But I think that's a great question, and and maybe something to consider is you know how we have a new participants program, maybe a new chairs program, which would have a lot of carrots attached to so encourage participation. Karsten, you want to go? Yeah, most real-world onboarding actually does not ha happen by being handed the company manual, uh, but by legitimately participating act in activities of people who already are onboarded. So I think we need to find better ways to actually get people to uh, join work of experienced working group chairs. And um, so Meet at Echo is a ni nice example of preventing that because it has this really rigid permission system. So you cannot just pull in someone and say, play working group chair with me for, for an hour. So you learn how that happens. And we need to be a little bit more accommodating of these, these informal things that normally happen uh, in real world, but not in our tools. Th thanks. Robert. So <clears throat> Robert Sparks, if Medico is listening, please uh, pay attention to the audio level for remote. We had a lot of ring in the room from Carson speaking. Um, I, to Miria's point, mandatory training, I think, would just be another barrier to make it that much harder to get ADs to recruit working group chairs. Having a strong program that people would want to attend and you know, having people encourage them to attend it is great. But having to check off, I set through my orientation session is, I don't think, going to help us. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Pete Resnick, I, I think expectations that chairs do a little training um, as usual is a good thing. And I would hope ADs encourage it strongly um, uh, just to kind of express a concern about Karsten's point. There are loads of chairs who do a great job and loads of chairs who don't do certain things well at all. Um, we can all do with assorted continuing training and continuing feedback. So having this stuff be not only a, an expectation for new chairs, but that old chairs kind of contribute to this and participate in it so that certain things get through that maybe haven't gotten through over the years is probably a good thing. Yeah. Um, uh, can, I'm happy to take, I'd like to get through my slides because my, my next slide has the only picture in the whole deck. So I really want to show that. Um, uh, this, oh, Drew turned red. Oh, I just locked the queue. Oh, sorry. Next slide, please. But it'll no, no, be no. fast. It'll be fast. So no, no, no. You, you still got three people in the queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next slide, please. Oh, okay. You, you want to do your slides before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to do slides. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there we go. This is the other suggestion. Evergreen, right? Like uh, how, how to be Schoolhouse Rock version for, for working group chairs. So thanks. Not going to name names, but thank you for that suggestion, too. Okay, last slide. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Second to last slide. Now, now, next slide, and that'll be the last slide. Go to the next. Next one. slide, please. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. So we already have some good suggestions. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Dhruv. One thing which I would suggest, which I really liked, was I was a secretary of the working group, and in some ways that was a very excellent set of a training right there. Another thing that my AD did was uh, having three chairs for the time being, so that we actually had the idea of the, the chair who was supposed to leave or uh, was part of the uh, team for a while, for a month. And the whole explicit goal was, yes, you have to make sure that there is a clean transfer and this thing, So, which was also very smooth. Apart from that, I think this kind of group where we want to learn from other chairs, because sometimes what happens, working group gets sets in their own ways and they are not really looking at what other working groups are doing and what are the, what's working somewhere else. So having this forum also is very important. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I really like the idea of a, of a, of a cohort, um, like building the cohort of shared, shared learning and shared um, experiences. I just very quickly wanted to clarify my word, my use of the word mandatory. 
So I think there's a lot of things we can and should do. And like, this is a very good starting point. The one thing I was proposing is really have like a one or two hour session for new chairs and expect every chair to like, at least go to that session to get like the initial onboarding done. I think that would be like, I would have really have appreciated that as a new chair. I think that would be really useful. And it doesn't have to be before you start your chairing, but like, you know, in a whatever, in the first year or whatever, whenever you can make time. That was my proposal. So if you're chair curious, you can go to you can go to the session and find out more you should you should should go to the session yeah i should not a must mallory uh yeah mallory at all um center for democracy and technology but also the human rights protocol considerations research group chair and that's relevant because we have a lot of newcomers to our sessions every single time um and i've been thinking about even before you brought this up this is great because i've my session is right after this. And I was thinking if we had time in the agenda to present um, an opportunity for the research group members to learn a little bit about our tool chain in GitHub. Because I think our GitHub instance might predate the RFC about how to use GitHub. I don't know that we're fully compliant with that. <laughs> we might have some quirks in the way that our GitHub is set up. And in general, I think we have to work with um, people who, because we don't have a lot of drafts right now. And I think part of the reason is people are producing research that's relevant to our group, but I don't think they, I think they're intimidated by the tool chain and the data tracker and all that stuff. So I'm hoping to host or to propose to host maybe some training sessions that are more like Q and A's for people that, yeah, they're like author curious. And so I'm wondering if other people see that as a potential thing. I mean, I think I'm doing it really bespoke for my, re for my research group, but um, I think it's a good practice because also as a teacher, um, teaching is sometimes the most instructive way to learn yourself. So I know that I don't know everything about the data tracker, but I, um, as a chair, but I, I think also like toying with it and playing with it for the purposes of showing others might also help me get more acquainted with it as well. Okay, so I, I take your comment to for the, in this context to mean that when we think about chairs, we should also think about not working group chairs, but also research group chairs. Okay, got it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Sue Harris, you're going to the mic Thanks. without going into the queue. You can go ahead, but <clears throat> in the future. <laughs> So sometimes I would like Sue, to just... Sue Harris. Hi, my name is Sue Harris, now that we've said it a few times. Um, I would sometimes like to just have five or ten minutes to talk to Robert and the data tracker team, ask questions, ask better format. Is that something... It's not really an onboarding kit, but it's something you might find useful. I would find useful as we, you know, is this a really good idea? Could we put this in there? More of a dialogue than sending something over the, the wall. Uh, well, Robert's in the room, but I know there is a code sprint usually on every Saturday preceding an ITF meeting. Is that I, what you had I, in mind? I felt really shy about going because they're in there and they're working hard and doing the really good stuff and I don't want to go in and sort of say, ah, uh, yeah, I got all these really strange questions. Yeah, I, 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 I feel the same way, but I still go in. And they're friendly. <laughs> Darren. Darren Dukes. Uh, I'm a brand new chair as of this week. Um, Yay, Darren. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'd love to get a, a welcome package uh, with some cookies. And... Uh, a piece of paper that tells me here are the things you need to do um, or a one hour, you know, uh, new chair introduction session. That'd be great. Can you and I talk later? Awesome. Yeah, okay. thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. Colin. Hi, uh, Colin Perkins. Uh, remember to tick accept all cookies when you're doing it. Um, so uh, a bunch of people have mentioned the, you know, understanding the data tracker as being an issue and understanding what's possible in the data tracker. Uh, I, I would just like to remind people, sandbox.itf.org. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Um, yeah, I think that's a good, good part of the answer. Donald? Five words, uh, tools, team, open office hours. 
Robert. So Robert Sparks, I was coming up to basically to say the same thing, but I also want to call out that we do have a monthly tools team call that is on the upcoming meetings list. Um, the agenda for that is open. There is usually a lot of time at the end of it for anybody to participate with ideas, questions, whatever. So, all right. Thank you. Um, Sorry, I'm not in the queue. I'm just about there. You'll see me pop up when I'm done talking. Um, All right, so go ahead. <laughs> uh, Murray, current area director. And for people who are scared of going to talk to the tools team, I'm an area director. All my questions are also silly, so please don't be afraid of them. Um, can you? Sarah go. Banks, I, I tried to enter the queue. I don't know if I even did that right. <clears throat> I, I just wanted to plus one some of what Miria uh, was saying. It's my first, I feel like all day I've been walking around saying it's my first meeting in four years in person. So having been a chair for 10 years, I learned a boatload of crap from my AD this morning running my group because I didn't know there weren't blue sheets and you have to scan the, the damn QR code now. And, and there's no freaking jabber, it's julep. Like I, I really like the idea of yes, having a place where you can go and have thoughtful training, whether you're new or whether you need a refresh would be really, really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, thanks Sarah. Welcome Jeff, back. Jeffrey. Jeff Oz. I, I gave a uh, how to IETF talk to uh, the routing engineers at a certain large company uh, on Friday since I was in town. And part of the discussion uh, we eventually realized was that uh, there's sort of a need for more flow charty type tools available. You know, data trackers sort of have been evolving in that direction where you can see the history and you get a sense from the you know, sort of front page. Here's the things that are in progress, but you don't always get a sense of what the flow some of these things are. And like the author site is good about sort of directing you down these things. If we took some of the common problem sets of things we deal with, you know, like how does a document move you know, through the, the process? All these sort of questions, a lot of cases are very straightforward workflow things that you could just literally have a, you're here in this process. Here's your next set of steps. Here's who you talk to at each of these steps. Yeah. Good thought. Thank you. I had I had one other thing I meant to say when I was up. Um, hi, Murray. When I, I when I'm back done being an AD and go back to working group chair, I intend to go through any kind of onboarding you've got because the whole working group chair view is not the same as the IASG view, and I'm sure the bunch of stuff has been added or changed since the last time I chaired, which will by then will have been at least four years ago, and I'm going to want that. So yes, I think having an onboarding path is like a, would be great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, any other I, questions? Well, uh, while Joey's going to the mic, I oh. just want to say uh, one of my in, uh, going in assumptions is that uh, the kit would be useful to that case as well. So not just brand new chairs, but chairs who would like updates to how tools are evolving and process and things like that. All right. Well, um, I've consistently been up outspoken about how uh, good of an idea I think it is to have onboarding kits for both uh, new participants and shares. Um, so today I just wanted to add to what everybody was saying that, um, um, for example, um, I've been a chair for only like a year or something like this. And I wasn't even aware that there was the tools meeting that we could attend with questions <laughs> or that we could also bring the questions to like the sprint um, on Saturdays, mm -hmm. for example. So then I think that having a centralized place or content where we can get this type of uh, pointers or reminders, right? Because like maybe we hear about this like at the very beginning and then we just forget and then it becomes like it never really existed, right? Um, so having a centralized place for those um, will not only help people like ramp up properly, right? Like if it's a new chair, then they can start building like good habits, you know, keep reminding uh, themselves that there's these other resources available but then at the same time for other people that have been chairs for longer or that need the reminder or whatever then it will also help us with the quality of information that we can also provide to the members in our board groups right like um if we are more aware of resources and practices then we can um pass along the relevant bits of information to the members in our in our board groups right okay yeah, yeah that's uh that's a good point but and and uh Two other quick points is I think I think of this of chairing as a skill, not a like a piece of information you understand and then you just know it. You you know it helps to practice. So and people have different levels of proficiency in different parts of it. So practice is always good. Um, and the other part uh, is that 
Um, chairs are definitely a key touch point, and we've heard this key touch point for participants, especially new participants. So they should chairs should definitely be. Um, I think chairs are initially seen, and I think should be seen as a resource for participants. Yeah. Thank All right, Boris Steele. I just wanted to say thank you for the video series that was shared, um, the tutorials, the training material. I found it really, really excellent, um, and I've shared it with you know some other folks who are experiencing similar issues and. In other places, and so that was just really excellent work, and and appreciate the those resources a lot. I appreciate you coming to the mic to say that. Thank you very much. We did work hard, and I I did not pay Ori. Um, Jay Daly, ITF executive director. Um, we put a fair bit of effort into um, wikis specifically for around particular groups of people, and I'm hoping that most of you know that we have a, a wiki specifically for chairs, chairs.ietf.org. Um, we're very happy to hear um, anything that you, you know, suggestions of missing content, new content, that sort of stuff. So I'm already taking away something here that we need a, you know, how to get support type page on there for chairs so that you can understand different sections and different people to go to and those kind of things. But um, we, you know, it's, a, it's an important tool, we think, and we're probably just like 20% of the way into developing it to the kind of thing that we think that you'd really um, need. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead, Robert. <laughs> Just one last comment. There was a strong tendency in the conversation to zero in on the data tracker. And I think especially at the beginning of trying to help Greg pull together what this onboarding team would look like, Take a moment to explicitly exclude the data tracker from what you wish you knew or what would help you if you had, because there is a lot of things like the list that um, Karen was talking about at the beginning on the best way you can do the verbal boilerplate at the front of a meeting um, that should be called out as something that we have built a, a good shared knowledge of. And there are other things like that and we need to dig for them. Yeah, I think there's uh, important to have some best practices kind of thing. Um, there was two observations, uh, two things. One, uh, Greg, at the beginning of this, there was a suggestion that we do a hum and then you said we don't do hums anymore. And uh, it has been pointed out to me that we do do hums. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, up, it's, it's, it's the... Um, working group, the chair of the meeting. So if you want to do a home, we can. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're right. I, I, um, yeah. so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but anyway, because this was the working group chairs forum, it was pointed out that we don't want that piece of misinformation to propagate. Yeah. So feel free to do homes if you want them. Uh, and the second thing that I wanted to point out, and this this goes beyond like what, what Robert is saying about like, you know, how to use data tracker. I think the other thing that, that we need to, and, and I've occasionally I, I think about posting this on the working group chairs mailing list and then I don't. But I think we also need to, you know, cut the working group chairs a little bit of slack. I think you can nicely point out that something hasn't been done, but then having 35 people pile on and say, well, you haven't done this or you've done that wrong um, is not helping with our overall tone of being a nicer organization. So um, I, I would encourage us to use positive language when reminding people A, that they haven't done things or B, correcting them about how they have done them. So that, that was, if I, I probably should have put myself in the queue to do that because that's like chair hat off, the thing that I never post on mailing lists when it sometimes gets to me. <laughs> so. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, a lot of really good input and I really appreciate that. Uh, you'll see there's a sort of top priorities list um, there. I'll be, uh, be capping, recapitulating, anyway. So you get another note on the working group chairs list just to sum up uh, this input that we got here. Thank you very much and feel free to send more. The, the other thing while Greg is walking back to his chair, I think the one thing we have now uh, in the last few years that we have not had before is resources from the LLC to develop the kind of training that we need to do. And I think in the past, we've always been asking for volunteers to do it. That's a really hard sell. It's hard to get people to do it. And now we we, we just need to tell them the kind of training materials that we have. And if it's useful, they'll produce them for us. And as, as Ori has already indicated, they did a really nice job with the, the working group chair training set. So with that, uh, we're going to move to uh, state diagrams. Um,
as I get the share slides, visualizing the ideal. And I'd like to thank Jeffrey for setting me up here. That was not pre-negotiated. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'm from the uh, co-chair co of the HP API working group. We have a lot of newcomers uh, who come in uh, with lots of API experience, but not a lot of IETF uh, experience. And I wanted to be able to show uh, those folks the path that their documents take through the working group and so that they would understand that working group last call is less like ordering beer at last call at a pub and more like last call for getting on a train to do a Trans-Canada trip. Um, and so I want to show the state of those diagrams and progress through those states. So next slide, please. There are tools in Data Tracker, and Data Tracker has some cool ones, like the timeline that where you go, oh my, we've been working on this for two years already. Um, and the, oh, look at all of those working group states. But you need to do some kind of mental arithmetic to be able to figure out what is the next step. Next slide, please. So I use Mermaid to create these diagrams, and I won't claim them to be precise in the flow. And I've heard from folks that different working groups have slightly different flows, and not all document travels through the same path. Um, but what we're trying to do here is capture the fact that you know, you're going to go through a draft, a few drafts, get to working group last call. You're going to do more drafts. And you can be at the last step in this process, and there are going to be even more drafts. You're going to get different groups of people giving you different pieces of feedback. And on this diagram, we use both color and shapes to indicate that the circle that is orange is showing where it currently is, and I've been updating these each time we have a, an IETF meeting, and the pink one I added to show, well, this is where we were uh, at the last IETF meeting, so we get to see a little bit of progress here, and it's part of our GitHub page uh, where I show the status of all of the drafts for our working group. But I create those by hand, and it's a bit annoying. Next slide, please. It requires some mermaid notation, and you have to kind of draw from going to point to point and little curly braces to make circles and class definitions to do the colors. And it, it, it is a little bit of manual work. And if there's any way we could automate this, this would be really cool. Next slide, please. Sorry. OK. So this time around, I showed up at Code Sprint. And Robert was fantastic helping me get and set up and showed me a little bit around the API, and I like APIs. So I started playing with those, and I'm saying, well, can we render these mermaid diagrams uh, automatically from information that is in the API? And there is a repo, and it is very, very early because, of course, I can't start playing with an API until I have an open API description. So I'm getting through there, but I will continue to working on that. Next slide, please. But you can call that API very, very easy. It's great because there's no auth. Um, and it, you can get the information about a particular document. And then you can grab that document ID. Next slide, please. And with one more call, you can get the document history, which shows you the, all of the revisions of the document and the states that that document has gone through in order to get that state. So you get a list of document histories. Now, Robert called out to me that uh, careful because some older documents don't have this history. But I'm looking at this for being able to update and give status on current documents. And so I believe, with a little bit more effort, uh, I should be able to get these documents generating. How? good we're going to be able to get them and how complicated they're going to end up being remains to be seen. But uh, I will continue the progress and I will share on the uh, working group chairs mailing list uh, when I have something that seems like it's working well. And so please feel free to reach out to me if you uh, are interested in this and you have any feedback. Hi, uh, Colin Perkins. Uh, this looks awesome, uh, and cool. I encourage you to do it. Um, the only thing I, I would caution is that the state machines are very different for the different streams. 
uh, the, the IRTF street, the IRTF state machine in particular is very different to the IETF one. So this is not going to work for research groups without a, a significant restructuring. So, yes, okay. re research group chairs, watch out. Yes, your mileage may vary. Hey, Lucas Pardo. Um, I think this is great. You should just do it. If I can help, uh, great. If you, even if it's just feedback. So as an example, as both a, a working group chair and an author on drafts, my I like operate a bit split brain, and I keep forgetting the status of things and, and what to do. And you know, I, I may maybe very focused on the drafts I'm shepherding or whatever in the working group, and then I have a draft that was stuck in IESG for a year, and and it's progressed now, and I don't know what to do. I I need to chase somebody up, and and. If this could help, it'd be great. So keep up the good work. Jeff Haas, I actually was familiar with your work when I made my comments. <laughs> so this is a wonderful thing for seeing where a working group's in progress, and that's certainly the case that you're working through. What I was sort of more get, generally getting to is if you're the newbie to IETF, where's the way for you to sort of click your way through how you know, IETF works? Kyle makes the excellent point that the state machinery varies depending on what we're doing. So that's another example of just simply being able to say, here's how I'm, where I'm at in the process, here's what I want to do with things, and big wish list uh, territory, I don't have time to contribute code. It'd be nice if we actually, as part of these things being in the bits of state maturity, we know these documents are in some of these things and some of these states are in the data tracker. I don't have a clean dashboard I can go to that says, this is all Jeff's fault. No, these things are waiting on Jeff to actually move this thing to the next step. Uh, I'm going to put, pick on the AD dashboard as a different example. You know, that's great at sort of saying things have entered the state, it's been touched by a number of people, but it's not necessarily easy to see who's got the active token in the state machine to bump things the next step. So all these things are about external visibility into how it should work. That's one flow that would be useful. The second one is where things actually are. This is wonderful for that. And the third thing is a little bit of reporting infrastructure to say, well, I'm at this state right here. Who is the next thing, next person, next entity that has the token on this and be able to trace that through? Yeah, and hopefully if we can make progress on this and say, oh, yes, this is a viable thing to do and we can build, uh, we were talking with Robert about being, being able to render uh, markdown diagrams in, sorry, mermaid diagrams that are in Markdown that are in the data tracker, um, then maybe there are other scenarios that enable us, that we can light up with kind of workflow-ish things. Yeah, and I guess it, it's worth pointing out, this is just a nice thing for visualization. And that's incredibly helpful as we're trying to walk people through things. To some extent, my desire is that the state machinery behind these things are actually the component that we're working on, less the visualization. Robert. So Robert Sparks, I heard buried in what you were discussing a request for a working group chair dashboard. And this is something that has been brought up and we're brainstorming on what something like that might look like. Um, I have seen several attempts in the past to do the generic, these are the state machines and all the possible transitions in the state machines and not just between the different streams, as Colin pointed out, but just within the IETF stream, groups get to decide not to use some states. They get to decide to never use the transitions. Um, they can, the data tracker will allow them, and it's not a process violation to make some hops that are not. It, transitions that are listed and have those state machines described themselves. I don't know if it is feasible without a lot of restructuring effort to create a walk up to the thing and visualize how the state machine works in just a general fashion. The approach that he's taking that is, you know, here is something that's going through a concrete set of steps and here's the next thing. I think that's very achievable in a, in a short time. So. Ori Steele. I, I love it. Um, I've written like at least two or three like mermaid compiler like things now. And I guess the one thing I would say is that like 
There's a lot of built-in support for Mermaid in other systems. So in case you don't know, you can embed Mermaid in Markdown and GitHub issues as a way of visually expressing an idea that you're having really useful for that. Uh, there's live editor tools that will kind of, you can do side-by-side -side coding as you go through it. So if you're trying to, to use Mermaid to communicate um, concepts with your working group back and forth and issues, it's great for that. And I'm happy to help uh, get this to the point where it's just a drop in render for any of the pages. I'll talk to you. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have six minutes left. Next, Pete. That's right. Uh, Pete Resnick, and here in my role as co uh, RSWG co chair, uh, only because Rich said, Hey, we haven't heard about that. Tell them what's going on. And so I figured I'd come up for 30 seconds and do a, a, a short thing. If you don't know, RFC 9280 set up the new structures for uh, the RFC series and the new entities. And so there is a RFC series working group which is what I co-chair. There is an RFC series uh, approval board and then uh, other pieces um, and that you can take a look in there. The key feature here is that the RFC series working group uh, publishes in the editorial stream, did you know that there was yet another stream of documents, uh, policies for the RFC editor, for the RFC series. And so we are currently working on things like um, gathering together the uh, one true and final XML vocabulary into a document. We are talking about um, you know, different high level policy things about what constitutes a stable document and et cetera and so forth. Um, nothing much of great excitement. I'd like to keep it that way. Um, but if you are interested in such stuff, please feel free to approach me. Uh, or read RFC 9280 and happy to chat about these things. I was asked to do this 20 minutes ago, so no slide and uh, no prepared uh, stuff. Anybody got any questions? You know where to find me? Okay. Do you want to go ahead and do your any other business now? Yeah, that'd be perfect. And then I'll go. Changing hats. Oh, uh, Myriad, please. Sorry, I'm if you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually, I think maybe let's see if you agree with me, but I think it would be nice to have more people coming to the group. It would I be mean, nice to have I, a yeah, few more I people coming I think it's, it's a group. boring process stuff, but at the end, we are all using these RFCs. So like, I know you all have an opinion and we really need more input. So someone did a quick review of the couple of hundred people that are on the RFC interest list, which is sort of the general discussion uh, you know, people who are interested in the RFC series and the 40 something people who are in RSWG. Um, so yeah, if you want to join in the discussion, please do. I certainly don't want to discourage that. Um, Robert. Yeah, well, encourage this is Robert Sparks. I'll just amplify, you know, if you don't want to live in a world where the RSWG has decided that you can only publish your RFCs as a document full of spaces and tabs, <laughs> you better come participate. <laughs> All right, um, switching hats. Um, uh, this is just a um, helpful hint from the ombuds team to the working group chairs. And it's one that you will, a couple of you will probably go, oh crap, yeah, I do that, sorry. Um, and I want to preface this by, I understand it is coming from a well-intentioned place. I have been in a working group session or two and others have where chairs are doing the note well and they say, and here are the anti-harassment procedures and things that you have to do. And, and we've been doing a really good job in this working group and haven't had any problems, but we're gonna show them to you and please make sure to continue doing that, which sounds very sweet on the surface. But I wanna remind you all that the ombuds team process is completely confidential. Um, you may have had serious problems in your working group that you don't know about. And even if it's not something that's come to the ombuds team, there may have been serious issues in your working group that you don't know about. And 
if one of the people who've had one of those serious issues is in the meeting, they're going to hear that and feel kind of crapped upon. Um, please don't say things like that. I know it's well-intentioned. I know you're just saying, hey, we're, we're really trying here, and that's good. But don't say everything is wonderful, because it might not be, and it could be a little upsetting to people who've really gotten uh, uh, the short end of the stick. Thanks. That's it. OK, so now we have one minute. The next item that I had put on the agenda was next steps for working group chairs forum. I have had a conversation with a few different people on this. and. Uh, I think what we'll do is just, if anybody is interested in following up, please uh, come talk to us. Uh, but I, I think we need to formalize this group a little bit more um, and uh, get more energy behind our plan for training and put a small charter around it. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Obviously, others would be involved in that conversation. Uh, but if you are interested in helping to organize this group or to chair it or to come up with topics, um, that would be uh, really helpful, and so please come forward. Um, and now we are at time. So first of all, uh, in the interest of being nice, thank all of you for being working group chairs. There's a lot of work there that a lot of you do that you might not get thanked for very often. And second of all, please exit the room and take your garbage with you and make it clean for the next group coming. 